I'm from a town where the young never shut our eyes. Pick your poison, you could ride with those other guys. Life is more than just a dream when your team's strong. We write anthems, this is more than just a theme song. Rap bees on our winter wears. Welcome to b on the home of the phenoms. It's only one city that we lean on. We call that What's going on guys? Etika from the Etika World Network Gaming Commentary here to bring you yet another edition of our Pokemon 5th Gen Battles. Now, of course I'm bringing this from you, to you from the park again, so I really do apologize. I just couldn't think of any more spots and I had a little bit of a limited time frame to do this, so I really do apologize. Now, before we start the video, there's a lot of new guys, so I need to show you guys some stuff. First off, check out the Q&A video. Here's a sample clip. Etika, have you had the runs? Etika, you say you had the runs and the stomach, and the stomach flu. Do you put priority into vomiting or taking a number two and why? I've always put my priority into taking number twos because those things, like, whenever you don't take one, you always feel that horrible cramping pain, like as if you're having a period or something. Second off, I actually created a video which details a real life story of mine, one that you guys probably have been asking for for a while. A lot of you guys have been asking me, yo, Etika, tell us a real life story of something crazy that happened to you. Well, here's my equivalent, and I'm trying my hardest not to sound like Swoozy in this one. Check it out. We're sitting in the station waiting for a certain train to come. We're actually having a Pokemon battle as this is all going on. The thing is, is that we notice that somebody sat next to us. I can notice at this point that the guy is starting to try to get a little bit close to me. So he's inching his way over, inching his way over until finally he's like, he's pretty much got his head in my lap and he's looking at the game we're playing and he's like, <laughs> what game is that? All right, so if you had enough of video clips today, let's actually get into the Pokemon battle. Now, of course, since there are a lot of new subscribers, since I got a hundred in the last day and it looks like I'm going to be getting a hundred every day from now on. Hi, I do competitive Pokemon 5th gen battles, and um, we pretty much categorize our battles in rankings. So bronze would be like an okay battle, it's pretty good, but not as good as the silver, which then would be sort of eclipsed by the gold. So that's the way that the battles were op operate on this channel. So um, anyways, without any more delay, we're going to go straight into the battle. That's usually what I do nowadays. I used to give a team preview and everything, but I deem it unnecessary when I'm not really doing much but talking about the teams, and a lot of you guys can figure out what the teams are going to do anyway. So let's get into the battle right now. So, I'm battling somebody today who was named Lit Power Media, and um, he's somebody who challenged me on my Skype. You guys can challenge me on your, my Skype if you want to. Anyways, he starts off with the Scrappy, and I go in there with my Nidoqueen. Now, of course, this is not really seeming like too bad of a move for me because, you know, my Nidoqueen is maximum defense. And plus, Scrafty doesn't really have that much attack off the bat if he doesn't set up. So, I'm feeling pretty good, but he switches out and he goes into his Buffalant. Now, of course, I could have just predicted this and gone for, like, straight up uh, Earth Power, but I wanted to see if he was going to switch into somebody who could be weak to the Ice Beam. So, whatever the case may be, I just go for it just to hit something. But I'm um, now, of course, I'm threatened out because I Earthquake. Now, here's the thing. I go into my defensive Uxie, and a lot of you guys will see that the Megahorn missed. Some of you might say, oh, that really mattered, but later on in the game, you'll see something that kind of doesn't make that matter as much, but you'll see later on. Either way, I go into my Escavalier now, because he has somewhat of an odd Buffalo build, you'll see. But anyways, go into my Escavalier, just because I predicted that most likely he might just go into his Conkledor, because I wanted to knock off his Flame Orb before he gets a chance to set up. Either way, I go back into my Nidoqueen. The reason why I didn't go into Buffalon is because I thought that the absorption of the Leech Seed or the Grass move due to the Sap Sipper was a little bit too obvious, so I didn't want to play into his hands there. But on top of everything else, my Virgo in there on his Ferrothorn is actually a quite a nice situation for me because now I have a free chance to fire off a super powerful special move. Now, me predicting that he most likely would switch and go into a Pokemon who is... Oh, wait, wait, no, never mind. I didn't predict this turn. I just went straight for the safe flamethrower. His Buffalon comes back in there now. Takes a good amount of damage, but not enough. I wish I would have gone for that Earth Power there, but oh well, it's all good. Either way now, I am threatened out by this Buffalo once more, and it is hot as hell out here, but the sun is going away solely, so things are okay. Either way, I switch out now, and I go into my Gyarados, who will be able to intimidate this guy. Only reason why I didn't go into Gyarados earlier is because I was worried he would have the Wild Charge like mine does, but I don't think he has it because after I go in there, oh, he hits me with the Head Charge. Oh, all right. You guys see that. I live the Head Charge, critical hit with one HP. At this point now, 
I know my Gyarados can be useful later on for using that Intimidate to slow down the attacking power of either the Conglador or the Scrafty, because I don't know what sets these guys are. I'm, I'm thinking the typical sets. So I switch my Gyarados out there to use his Intimidate and Death Fodder later on. I go into my Uxie, who will be able to pretty much absorb anything this Buffalant wants to do after I hit him with the Intimidate, and I'm going to go for my Stealth Rocks here. Now, of course, he's going to go for the Fake Out just to get that extra damage off, and since he doesn't have a Life Orb, that doesn't hurt him too bad. But of course, now it's a great opportunity for me to set up my Stealth Rocks. The thing that I'm thinking is that most likely, I'm going to be the most scared of that Conklador because he can come in late game. So, I, either way, I'm trying to prepare for that by going for moves, predicting when the Conklador is going to come in. But you guys are going to see later on that he saves his Conklador for a little bit later in the game. Not trying to give too many spoilers, but yeah, his Conklador doesn't come in until later on. So, either way now, he goes for his Thought Rocks. I don't really mind too much, even though I don't have a Rapid Spinner. It's okay. I just stay in there and go for the super strong Earth Power, not over predicting or anything. I just want to hit something with a really strong move. And I'm going to be able to kill the Feral Thorn in one hit thanks to critical hits. So back and forth, critical hits, misses are all over the place now. He goes into a Star Raptor now. And of course, I am threatened by this guy. So I go into what I think will be able to take the hit the best. I go into my Uxie. Even if he did go for the U-turn, it wouldn't really be able to do much unless he maybe was maybe was Choice Bandit or something. Goes for that double edge. It's going to do a whole lot of damage, but not that much considering that I am a defensive behemoth. So I'm able to take that quite well. And at this point now, this guy's going to switch out because his his Star Raptor is definitely considered valuable. I know that for a fact. Goes into his Buffalo. I'm going to just go for the Thunder Wave to be able to slow down his Star Raptor, but instead I hit the Buffalo. I'm not really arguing with the slow down Buffalo, although it isn't as important as a slow down Star Raptor. Either way, now. I'm in there real, real nice because I'm feeling like, okay, I can just switch in on this guy. Here we go. You guys want to see the stupidest play ever made in the game? You guys want to see the stupidest play ever made? I'm about to show you the stupidest play ever made in the game. Um, well, before this move, he goes for the Mega Horn. This is why the Mega Horn Mist didn't matter earlier because it does nothing to me. Absolutely nothing whatsoever. So I'm like, okay, maybe this Buffalo isn't maximum attack invested. But either way, this guy really doesn't have too much to offer me. So I'm going to be able to stay safe in there. I'm thinking since he doesn't have that much attack, I can just go into my Electros and be able to absorb a hit, right? This is the worst move I ever made in the game because Electros is meant for a late game, not for any kind of early game stuff like I'm trying to make him do now. I go in there and I take extra damage from the Mega Horn, the Stealth Rocks, and then on top of everything else, I decide to go for a Coil on this turn, just trying to just trying to get more damage or more defense raised up. This was the stupidest move I made because Juicy could not really do much at this point because a physical attacker could have just easily come in afterwards and totally wiped him out even with one Coil boost. So I learned my lesson. He hits me with a goddamn head charge, and it does a good amount of damage, you know, more than I thought it would after the coil boost. This is why I feel like my stomach sinking into my asshole pretty much because I'm like, damn, Juicy, no! I needed Juicy because Juicy could have been really vital for taking down Conquador and such. But at this range of HP, after more Stealth Rock switch-ins, and plus considering that I'm going to have to most likely take a move when I, after I switch in, Juicy pretty much is not in a prime state anymore, so I ruined Juicy. And that was one of the worst moves I ever made in this game. Either way, now his Star Raptor comes in, and I'm trying to salvage something out of Juicy. So I switch out, go into my Gyarados to be able to intimidate the Star Raptor, slow its attack down to make it easier for somebody to come in and retaliate, attack this motherfucker. So this way, I'm thinking, you know what? Gyarados was used wisely because now Star Raptor is pretty much slowed down in attack. Now I go into my Escavalier to be able to absorb the double edge because I'm getting the hint that this guy just might be choice. Now, of course, knowing that the guy is probably scared out by my Escavalier, I thought he, that he would switch out. So that's why I go for the knockoff, trying to hit maybe the Conquador on the switch in or the Scrafty on the switch in. He stays in there like a brave son of a bitch, predicts me to go for the knockoff maybe because my team is very public. A lot of you guys know my team. And um, now that I knocked off his Choice Scarf, this guy has free reign to go crazy on my team. And because this Raptor is faster than everything on my team, he's going to have a whole lot of fun. But you know what? Luckily, that recoil damage was able to cut him down real early, so I don't have Star Raptor to deal with. But now I lost my Escavalier on some stupid shit. I should have just gone for the attack on that turn, but. You know, a dumb Etika trying to do the unorthodox thing in this battle. Either way, now, um, go into my Uxi now. And of course, it's not going to be able to live that Ice Beam from Nidal Queen, considering the Shear Force, and maybe this guy might be choice. You can't really tell because of Life Orb and Shear Force combining, you can't really see the recoil damage. Either way, now, I go into my Buffalant, and I should have kept Buffalant alive for later because this kind of shows me that his Nidal Queen is scared out by Buffalant. I'm just going to go straight for that goddamn head charge. It is neutral damage. I mean, it's neutral damage, but it has a whole lot of attack power considering the stab bonus and the high, very high base power. I'm going to be able to hit the Scrafty, do a seasonable amount of damage, but not enough for my liking. I switch myself out of there knowing I don't want to take a Drain Punch. Go into my Electros, because at this point now, the only thing that I can do is give him a Pokemon of Fodder and then retaliate with my Buffalo and my Nidoqueen 
smartly. But you guys are going to see, once again, I decide not to be so smart. Either way now, he goes, he's going to go for the drain punch, finish off my Juicy. I was hoping that maybe I might be faster, but I'm not faster, so that kind of sucks for me. But things are not all lost because there's still a chance here. Now, here's the smarter move to make. I should have gone into my Buffalo, hit this guy Scrappy with the superpower and KO'd it. But instead, I go into my Nidal Queen thinking that he might predict that, but he doesn't. He just goes straight for the safe play, stays in there with the Scrappy, hits me with the Ice Punch. I'm going to live it with the Smidgen since I do have attack investment, but I'm going to be able to hit this guy with a really strong Earth Power, totally decimate his Scrappy. But you see, now that I wasted my Nidal Queen, I don't have Nidal Queen later on to take down the Conkledor. Because Conkledor really can't do much to Nidal Queen. Even though he's a fighting type, Nidal Queen had, my Nidal Queen has really high defenses. So if I had gone with Buffalant, super powered, and then gone into Nidal Queen, I probably would have been able to take this Conkledor down. But since I didn't do the smarter play, I tried to do experimental plays, whatever the case may be, I'm going to be in there now with my last Pokemon. He has two Pokemon left. Going to go for that super strong head charge. It's going to do a lot of damage, but not enough to take down the Conkledor especially considering that it is neutral. This is not gonna be a question of if I can get KO'd. It's how badly did my fucking Buffalon get damaged in that punch because I know he must have like a trillion broken bones right now. Guess what I'm having for dinner tonight, guys? Guess what I'm having for dinner? Steak. And that, my friends, is the end of the game. But um, Lit Power Media, it was a great game. This guy's starting a YouTube channel soon. It's gonna be big. He's gonna be covering X and Y stuff. Along with my channel, I'll also be covering X and Y stuff too. So um, yeah, that was a great game. It was also a mixed tier battle. I hope you guys enjoyed that kind of stuff. I'm gonna try to incorporate that a little bit more into my Pokemon battles. And don't worry, I know a lot of you guys are like, new team, new team, you gotta make a new team. I don't know if you've had the same team for the battles for the past 25 battles, you need to make a new team. Don't worry, I'm gonna make a new team. I just don't have a lot of time right now. I'm working on a lot of those video ideas that I was telling you guys about in my previous video, so a lot of you guys are going to enjoy those video ideas, I think. We're going to try to film some demos today. Remember, I said I was going to incorporate Hot Girls, Pokemon, and YouTube together, so, you know, I got, I got plans for you guys. You just got to be a little patient with me. So once all those things quell down, I'll be able to make a new team, and then I'll probably be able to battle with you guys more often, because, you know, everyone knows my team pretty much back and forth. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thank you once again for tuning in. My name is Etika from the Etika World Network. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, definitely feel free to message them to me. But hey, I ain't going to hold up no more of your time. I'll talk to you guys later on. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a goddamn good one. I'm about to go frolic and shit in the park. I'll see you guys later.